Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. The latest news poll in today's Australian newspaper shows federal Labor's popularity is at a record low. The results were especially bad in Queensland, where the Prime Minister Julia Gillard is losing the support of women and young people. The Premier says she's not worried by the results of the latest poll. There's a federal election in uh, 2013 and that is the poll that will really count when Australians have a chance to make a decision after they've seen some of these, uh, these reforms uh, in action. But Anna Bly says her party isn't out of the woods. There's uh, quite a lot of time between now and then and uh, clearly the federal government has a lot of work to do. The Prime Minister's popularity with women is almost equal to opposition leader Tony Abbott the man she once accused of having a problem with female voters. A drop in support in every mainland state has put Labor at a severe disadvantage. The worrying thing for Labor, I think, is that some of their big falls have been in areas that have held up better for Julia Gillard. If an election was held today, Kevin Rudd would be the only federal Labor MP left in Queensland. Political experts say Queensland has always been a tricky state for Labor. It's a diverse state. It tends to be a bit of a conservative state and it's just not a natural hunting ground for federal Labor. But they maintain there's still hope. Political fortunes can change relatively quickly, so the thing at the moment is for the government really to hold its nerve and to get on with its uh, uh, program. Most pressing, the ongoing debate on asylum seekers and continuing leadership speculation. Kieran Rooney, QUT News. Fuel prices are expected to rise by at least 11 cents in the coming week as the Aussie dollar falls. The RACQ is predicting that unleaded fuel prices will go as high as 151 cents per litre within days. RACQ says a change in Brisbane's fuel cycle will mean an increase in prices this week of more than 10 cents a litre. What that means is that motorists are going to be feeling it in the hip pocket. If they miss the bottom of the most recent cycle, it's going to cost them at least another $7 to fill up the tank. She says the current weekly cycle will be extended to a price cycle of about 12 days. It's very hard to know why the cycle's different. Obviously the vast majority of motors do live in the southeast corner and obviously the fuel, fuel retailers want to make sure that they're uh, maximising the opportunity for profits. Some motorists were shocked when they heard of the predicted price rise. I don't think it's inappropriate. I don't think it's necessary. It's just making um, oil companies even richer. I'm shocked. Not that they'd actually go down, not up. Yeah, that's, that's pretty high. With oil prices on the rise, it's clear that motorists will be copying the brunt of it. QUT News contacted the Associated Institute of Petroleum and several other retailers, all of whom were unwilling or unavailable for comment. Despite the price rise predictions, at least one economist says the weakening Australian dollar will not significantly affect fuel prices. It's fallen about 5% in the past week, week and a half, but luckily enough for uh, petrol users, the oil price has also fallen by around 5 to 6%, so the net effect at the pump isn't great. However, the RACQ believes the prices will rise and it advises motorists to shop around to avoid filling up mid-cycle. Jade Mahadi, QUT News. Police are investigating a suspicious fire in Ipswich overnight that has destroyed two historic buildings and left one person injured. The landmark buildings, which have been earmarked for private redevelopment, went up in a spectacular blaze. It took 90 minutes and six fire crews to bring it under control. Police have cordoned off the area as investigators try to determine how the industrial fire began. A federal inquiry into disaster insurance has been told that flood-affected communities in Brisbane are getting the runaround from insurance companies. Some community members say there should be tighter regulations on the sale of insurance policies. The Federal Parliamentary Committee listened to tearful accounts of how flood-affected residents in Brisbane are battling with insurance companies over flood claims. The public hearing at Graceville State School was part of a national inquiry into insurance payouts for natural disaster claims. The inquiry was told fine print and vague definitions have left homes and businesses without enough insurance to rebuild. We need a standard definition of flood. Um, at the moment, depending on policies, uh, even within the same insurance companies, there are different definitions. Legal aid organisations told the committee they are still taking on new cases nine months after the Brisbane River swept through 30,000 properties. They want industry guidelines to be replaced with an enforceable rulebook. 
And we want that enforceable instrument to contain provisions that specifically protect consumers and provide penalties when those protections are not complied with by the insurance companies. The most recent statistics say there are over 8,000 flood affected homes that had their insurance claims rejected. But legal representatives say there are unsuccessful claims this figure doesn't represent. The inquiry has now moved to Ipswich and will visit Toowoomba and Innisfail before the end of the week. Emily Grimens, QUT News. In Victoria, a toddler has been killed by a car driven by his mother in what police are calling a tragic accident. The boy's grandfather was also injured in the incident and was taken to hospital in a serious condition. A community is in shock in Victoria's Mornington Peninsula. At 6 o'clock last night, a woman drove onto the lawn outside a holiday house she was renting with her father and son. Police believe she accidentally hit the accelerator, driving over her son and pinning her father against the house. Neighbours came running after hearing the screams. The mother was totally distraught, which is quite understandable. The father was pinned to the house by the car. Uh, the baby was lying under it. Witnesses say the boy was revived at the scene and was taken away in an ambulance. The baby came around. He was completely white and blue. You know, blue uh, lips. Uh, the baby started crying, so we thought it was all right. The boy was later pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. Izzy Fry, QUT News. Thousands of customs and quarantine workers at international airports across the country walked off the job today, protesting about stalled pay negotiations. The union leading the work stoppages has apologised to passengers for any delays, but says it had no other choice. Workers stopped for up to two hours at a time at international airports and major ports across the country. Members of the Community and Public Sector Union have been locked in a government pay dispute since enterprise agreements expired in June. They say they did not want to resort to industrial action, but they're fed up with stalled negotiations. This is a last resort for these guys. They're totally frustrated. They've uh, tried everything else. The federal government capped any pay rise at 9% over three years. But the CPSU say this is just not enough. The union says the offer doesn't keep up with the rising cost of living, though it matches the Reserve Bank's inflation estimates. They're seeking a pay rise of 4% per year. Despite measures by customs officials to minimise interruptions, thousands of passengers experience delays throughout the day. Even actor Hugh Jackman was caught up in the industrial action when coming into Sydney International Airport from Los Angeles. It wasn't too bad, you know. I thought it was going to be worse, but it wasn't that bad. The union warns industrial action will continue if their demands are not met. A transport workers' union stop work, directed at Qantas, is expected to cause further delays at major airports on Friday morning. We're very hopeful that they come back to the negotiating table because it simply makes it very difficult for passengers travelling. Qantas says the strike will disrupt the travels of school holidaymakers and footy fans headed to the AFL and NRL Grand Finals. Anna Angel, QT News. Telstra has launched its new fourth generation wireless network that it claims will double existing mobile phone and broadband speeds. The high-tech gadget will mainly benefit users in the central business districts of Australia's main cities. The national launch of the 4G network in Sydney was a bright and colourful affair. Telstra says download speeds for its new 4G device will be up to 10 times faster than the current 3G devices. The super-fast gadget, which plugs into a standard USB, can only be used within 5 kilometres of the GPO in CBDs around Australia. However, some regional areas will also have access. It's going to give us uh, uh, more capacity to do real-time multimedia download and upload. Dr Mutu believes businesses and individuals will benefit because of the large demand for faster and more reliable internet connections. Obviously the faster services uh, are needed for uh, better performance uh, and these days uh, things are changing quickly. People like to have information uh, on the fingertip. Telstra says modems and downloads will cost no more than their current 3G plans, around $50 for 4 gigabytes per month over two years. Currently, the 4G service is only available for computers. Smartphone users will have to wait until next year to use the service. Mariana Economist, QUT News. And now to sport. Collingwood player Dane Swan is this season's Brownlow medalist, breaking all polling records in the AFL's recent history. 
I declare the winner of the 2011 Brownlow Medal, Dane Swan from the Collingwood Football Club. Magpie Dane Swan took out the AFL's most prestigious award last night, beating favourites Chris Judd and Adam Goods with a record score of 34. The midfielder finished with the highest tally under the current counting system and six votes ahead of St Kilda's Nick Del Santo. To the rugby union and Wallabies back row, Wycliffe Parlow has been ruled out of the remainder of the World Cup due to a hamstring injury. He suffered the strain in the Wallabies win over the United States and will be out for six weeks. The Wallabies are likely to delay naming a replacement until after the game against Russia on Saturday. In soccer, the Brisbane Roar are amping up their training in preparation for the season opener in early October. Despite Harry Kuehl and Brett Emerton signing with Brisbane Victory and Sydney FC, the Raw are prepared to defend their 2010 championship win. Yeah, you, of course you want to test yourself against the best, and no doubt Harry Kuehl and the Brett Emertons and you know, Adelaide have recruited well as, as well, and uh, you, know, you want to test yourself, and if we can beat these teams, then it'll be a massive you know, feather in our cap. The Raw kick off the season at Suncorp Stadium on October 8, meeting their championship opponents, the Central Coast Mariners. Kate O'Hara, QT News. Keeping with tradition, AFL's leading ladies turned heads with a series of bejeweled bodices, plunging necklines and plenty of glowing skin at Monday night's Brownlow Medal Awards. There were plenty of fashion hits and of course some fashion misses as the wives and girlfriends, or wags, strutted their stuff on the blue carpet. Bryn Adelston once again showed off her flamboyant style with a rising hemline and plummeting neckline her shimmering gold number didn't leave much to the imagination. I actually have a white one upstairs that I plan on wearing until about two hours ago. I had his assistant running around like crazy, grabbing shoes, bags, changing my jewels, and it all worked out. Blue carpet veteran Rebecca Judd donned a simple yet elegant mustard-coloured gown in contrast to her infamous 2004 red number. Newcomer Nadia Coppolino certainly put her stamp on the awards with her full-length emerald gown embracing this season's colour-blocking trend. But for the players, who swapped their short shorts for stylish suits, the night was all about the football. Now it's time to take a quick look at the weather. Turning our attention to the sky cam, and as we can see, it was clear skies to Brisbane this morning until cloud cover rolled in around 9 and hung around for the rest of the day. The satellite picture shows no major changes across the country, with some lingering cloud cover over Victoria, Tasmania and southern parts of New South Wales and Western Australia. Elsewhere, conditions continue to be mainly cloud-free, apart from some cover over Central Australia. Around the nation tomorrow, there will be showers in Sydney and Adelaide, but there may also be some late storms in for the South Australian capital. Canberra and Perth will have a cool start to the day. Hobart will see isolated showers, while Melbourne can expect some late storms. In the top end, Darwin will have some fine weather and a top of 32 degrees. Now to Queensland, where it should be mostly fine except for some isolated showers in Cairns and Townsville. Out west, it will again be a hot day, with Longreach and Mount Isa reaching a top of 36 degrees. The outlook for the Gold Coast is mostly sunny, with a top of 24 degrees. Winds will be 10 to 15 knots from the southeast, tending east northeast in the afternoon, with seas to 1.2 metres. And further north, the Sunshine Coast can expect a top of 26, with winds at 10 to 15 knots and seas at 1.2 metres. Now to the outlook for Brisbane over the next three days, which will see more fine and warm weather, although some rain may develop on Thursday. That's all the weather for now. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.